Now, I don't know about you, but for me, the Pandora Forest was a character in its own right. I don't think I've ever been so upset by a tree dying before. In part two, Robin Hollander shows us some of Weta Digital's matte painting techniques that brought Pandora to life. So we just recently delivered over 1,800 shots on James Cameron's Avatar. Um, it was a real challenge for us and a, you know, a new, new style of movie because it was a full CG feature most of the time. Uh, there wasn't that plate based. Um, so a lot of people think that the whole compositing aspect of it was actually quite minimal when in fact you know, it's far from the truth. Um, one of the real big strengths that we found in Nuke was to project all of our matte paintings back onto geometry and cards. Uh, obviously this being a stereo movie we had to project it onto cards to get that whole stereo richness and depth to the actual shows uh, but it also allowed us to be really fast and flexible and turning around you no know, changes and updates so we wouldn't have to rerun the matte paintings every time we could just move stuff around in new and you know new camera moves plug new cameras in and it'd be really really great and fast way of doing this so one of our main sort of matte painting sequences was the, the big floating mountains of pandora as you can see in this shot uh, the way we went about this was our matte painters would create the original file in Photoshop. Uh, as you can see, these absolutely stunningly beautiful matte paintings, award-winning too, I dare say. Um, so all of these elements uh, were split out into separate layers, so they had complete control over how much fog, how much clouds, you know, they could just spit them out at, at any given rate. And the way the script was set up, uh, which is real nice and tidy because I didn't do it, uh, we've got our clouds here, we've got sky and ground, uh, we've got cliffs, floating mountains. Again, we were really flexible and we could just export geometry from Maya, project it back on, or in a lot of cases we just use cards because we're just projecting clouds into something flat. You really don't need um, an object with a million polygons. A bit detailed if you look at this. So this here, for instance, is a flattened out Photoshop file. We're only interested in the clouds, so we only got the alpha channel for that pre-melt those and there's one set of clouds uh, and we really just start stacking clouds up so as we go along we just keep adding them in more here more here some more here and if you look at this in 3d space there you go you can instantly if i just kind of scrub around like this you can instantly see there's a lot of depth to it if rotate this around again there we go it gives us a really great visual, uh, visual interpretation of the actual space that we're covering uh, and also you know, all the stereoness of it, you know, how, how far apart do we space it, how much depth are we giving this shot. So in a typical shot you really just go ahead and just start adding more and more elements. So this here would be the ground, this one here would be the sky, and so on. So we just add those all together. So again, it gives you a really, really great visual kind of key as to how much depth you're actually pumping back into this shot. So it really stacks up beautifully. Um, you know, it's incredibly fast. These files are really big. It's all working really well. Uh, if you play this back, one of the features I really like about Nuke is that all the on-screen controls would actually play back in real time. So in the camera here, for instance, it really gave us a, an easy way of making sure that we're not cutting anything off on the sides, so we're not pointing down and there's a big hole in the ground. We could really make sure that we're covering you know, the whole range of view. Um, so over here, it's more of the same, more elements, more floating mountains. We could really stack this up, you know, have hundreds of hundreds of cards in there. So this would be our final matte painting setup. Again, it gives you a really great visual interpretation of the actual depth they'll be adding back in. Uh, obviously, this was a shot-by-shot -shot process, so I'm sure a lot of the actual elements could have been transferred over into scripts, but it was pretty much a shot-by-shot -shot kind of task. As you can see here, this whole right-hand side is looking a little bit barren. The uh, reason for that is that uh, we had all the foreground hero cliffs and obviously characters that have been lit and rendered in Maya and then given to us as CG assets. So bear in mind, this is just a matte painting projection that we did with Nuke. Uh, we did quite a few of them, several hundreds, and it really, really, really came out well, I think. Award-winningly well, I'll say it again. So that's it, that's the final matte painting that we then pre-comp. If you look at this in the final comp, obviously the foreground rock being a hero rock, lit and rendered, um, 
You can also see it's got lens distortion, which we would have added later on in the comp. Um, and we also added things like uh, elements, like waterfalls and bids and bobs, a bit more atmosphere going over the whole hero rocks and characters as well. We could just go in and remove certain rocks, we could change them, we could grade them, we could lower them. It's a real fast, intuitive way of doing it. Thanks guys, and we'll have more on Nuke in the coming weeks.